Hi, thanks for joining me again. I thought we'd look at supply, selling pressure and distribution. It's a pretty big topic. It might take a little while to get through, but I can show you quite a few examples over a period of time and I hope you'll be able to get an eye for it and understand what might be going on. The first chart we'll look at is CPH. We'll go back in time. Now, you can see here on this chart, price has been trading in the 40 to 60 range. And then here, it spiked up considerably on a large increase in volume. Anytime price gaps up like that, you should be suspicious. It's not normal trading, and it's often done for a reason. It may be that there's an old high in the background and price needs to gap over it to encourage holders to remain in their positions and not sell back at break even if they've been underwater for a period of time. So we can go back and have a look if there's an old high in the background. And we can see one here. So perhaps we'll mark that with a line. And you can see the price did, in fact, gap over that line volume was a little excessive still so that would be something you could be suspicious about it was considerably more but at that point without knowing anything that's happened since although you can see it at that point, you could have considered that that was absorption of supply. Well, it was absorption of supply. And it was an attempt to encourage those holders at the previous high who had been underwater for a period of time to continue holding and not sell back at break even. So you would accept that at that point in time. Now, the next bar also gapped up from the previous close and volume was very similar it was high again and spread has increased so you would accept that as well the close was on its high that was also quite good and positive you have to still remember that anytime you get widespread up bars you have to be suspicious someone is selling when there's high volume like this someone is selling there's no doubt so you've got to be suspicious, it's not normal trading, but you can benefit from it. So while it's being positive, that's okay. The next bar, the third bar gaps up. Now I've actually been back and had a look and on this bar here, there was an announcement that was favorable to the market and that's created this whole rise in price. Now this bar has also gapped up. Volume is much higher again, considerably higher again, but the close was at the low end of the traded range. That's the range it traded for the day, and the true range is from the previous close. And it's gapped up from the previous close. Always be suspicious of a gap up. And it's traded with a widespread on very high volume but it's closed poorly. That's very suspicious, something you should always be worried about, especially when the next bar is then down. 
This is people selling. Supplies come in, there's no doubt about it. And the next bar was also down. And they were both still on quite high volumes when you consider where the normal regular day-to-day -day volume was. This was still high volume. Now you can see price slowly drifts lower after that nasty event and it continues to move lower. At this point here, you can see that price, we're down here at the volume, uh, volumes have started to ease quite a bit and there was some demand come in down here and that equates to the previous high and then price begins to move higher again. It's, this is quite a common thing when you see supply coming in. Larger holders, when they need to exit or when they want to exit for whatever reason, are often not able to sell their entire line in one go and will need multiple opportunities to sell. So price comes up again. Once again, it's gapped up here on quite high volume. It's closed positively up near the high of the bar. So you'd consider that's okay. But you'll see that the next bar accelerated higher initially and then failed and closed near its low on very high volume again. If you weren't getting the message by now that someone is selling a position, then there's something wrong. You've really got to be able to identify this. It's really, really obvious that someone is selling a position. It doesn't mean it's all over for the stock and that's it forever. It means someone selling their position, someone with a lot of stock. It might be a, a group of people uh, or multiple people. One person triggers another if they're selling, we're selling. We're not going to stay in the market any longer. But for whatever reason, there's a lot of supply being drawn out of this market and it's not likely to make new highs again for quite some time. Now if we scoot forward and just have a look at what did happen, you can see prices just continued lower for quite a period of time since. And that was the response of this selling pressure here. Someone, some group, a good proportion of the market decided to exit for whatever reason at this point. And all these widespread gap up bars on a good news story was an opportunity for them to sell their positions. And you should note the structure that's taken place here because you'll see this quite often in speculative growth style stocks. Now another example now we look at AJM Now it's really hard to see it's really hard to see on the daily chart. This is really a true distribution pattern. If I switch to a weekly chart it'll probably be much more obvious. Now this has taken place from early November to mid-June, so a good seven months. This is a period where price had been rising considerably from just above 10 cents and prior to that in the one to two cent levels. Similar to what we saw last time, prices started to move very wide spreads 
And you can see just looking at it down here, six million shares traded for three and a half. But when you get to these higher volumes, it's 50 million shares traded. That's 10 times the average amount of trading. You need to know straight away that these sorts of things just aren't normal. You've got to be aware of that. It doesn't mean you need to just sell straight away. Be aware that abnormal trading is taking place and something's going on and keep your eye on what is suspicious and be aware that this is a trading stock, this is a speculative stock and in the market you'll find that there's speculative professionals who are only going to remain in the stock while it's a speculative stock and if it decides to, in this case, go mining, they're not there for dividends, they're there for short growth and they will sell on the good news story that we're going to go mining and that's generally what's happened here. They're going to go mining. The speculative professionals are going to spruik the stock as this is fantastic, drum up all this demand and sell into the demand that's created. So you can see prices started to spike up. It's not until it gets to here where the first gap takes place. There's a little gap from the previous close and on that, 76 million shares were traded when three and a half to five was about the previous average. But it's made good ground. Uh, the close is up near its high. It's still reasonably positive. And the next bar was also up. Volume was a little lower and the close was a little off the high. But the telltale sign that, the, that supply has come in and it's not going to keep going higher is that the next bar is down with a widespread an increase in volume. There was a close off the low, so there's still buyers in the market. There's still some buying in the market. But um, the next bar, the next two bars were up with very narrow spreads and look how low the volume is. Demand for higher prices on these two weeks were very low. This is no demand, a lack of demand in the market. Then when price attempted to drift lower, volume remained about the same. So you would have to say at that point that selling pressure has eased from this initial event. And if we mark a line across there, that's going to be quite instructive in the future. Um, but you can see the prices then pushed higher again. You've got this bar on a high increase in volume. And then when the market was tested, there was very little supply. So price accelerates higher again on good volume. It does close off its high. Next bar, next two bars are down, or next one, two, three, four, five bars are down which is a serious sign, again, that in this bar, the up bar, was full of supply. That was selling to anyone who was a buyer in the market was being satisfied. And you can see if we remove all of that, you can see a really big effort to push up here. Look at the volumes that came in through here that's a big effort by the market. But then as it comes back down, you can see that selling pressure is relatively low. Then there's another big effort by the market. It pushes hard with lots of volume here and here in particular. It's pushing up, but it didn't make very much new ground at all and it wasn't able to maintain it. It did create a new high but it closed pretty much at the previous high and then just drifted lower immediately. It wasn't able to maintain that level. This was a big effort by the market that failed. You've got to then realise that someone, some group, a number of groups are selling. Anyway, the market 
put that line back. Anyway, the market did find some support, whether that be true believers or those who are selling, supporting the market because they still have more to sell, it, you'll never know. But a third big effort is put in. And this volume will be this bar. Uh, that was another big push. But all that was created was an upthrust, a VSA style upthrust, if you watched the last video, on quite high volume with the next bar down. And once price broke below this level, the low of this last up bar, this one here, price tried to hold on through here, but it wasn't able to. And here's your breakdown bar. It's broken down behind, below all the lows. Now whether you want to mark that level or whether you mark this level, it doesn't really matter. All the same, this is your breakdown bar. This was a failure to recover. And look at the volume on that. I'm sure it'll be no demand. There. There is no demand in the market. Buyers, are, there's no way there's enough buyers in the market to recover that lost ground, to recover that breakdown below all of these lows. It's a fail. It's going to fail. Now, you could go short here and put your stop up here. You could go short on this bar, depending on your rules, and put your stop here. Or you could wait for price to break below the no demand bar go short on this bar as it's broken through. Um, it'll all depend on the rules you've set up for your trading strategy, if you're trading short over short time frames. There's no doubt on this bar here, with that volume, price is going to be able to recover. And you can see here, on this bar, sellers have realised it and they're going to sell now because if they haven't sold through all of this over a period of six months and that was probably over a period of four months and the last couple of months came here, but over a period of four months if you hadn't realised by now what's going on, then you were due to get out here, it wasn't going to recover. And if we have a look, prices moved from the 40 to 45 cent range right down to the current price around the 5 to 7 cents. This was a distribution. This was six months of sustained selling and price was not able to recover. And it was never going to recover, not at this point. What generally happens is the speculators get out and the stock goes mining and during the period that the mine is being built, price declines and then you'll find that the actual investors move in and when they start to make a profit, if they make a profit, price then recovers and starts to move higher again. And that's the exchange of shares from the speculative side to the investor side. In this case, in this stock, it hasn't happened, or it hasn't happened yet anyway. Okay, that's the first video on supply, selling pressure and distribution. We saw selling pressure in the first one. It didn't mean that stock had completely lost its position, but it saw one or more groups sell out their stock and cause price to move lower. In the second stock, we saw some serious distribution where the stock has yet to recover. Okay, thanks for your time. See ya.